Ah, welcome to Out and About, a show where we explore a variety of issues, topics, organizations, and people who are uh, making some uh, news in our society and trying to do some good. As a disclaimer, uh, this show is just from my perspective. It's not connected with any organization I might be affiliated with in any other way, and there's a few of them. But uh, yeah, we just want to get out some news and perspective. And today we are delighted to have a very special guest on. It's Chun James, who is running for the mayor of Honolulu. And uh, I've known Chun from her um, first just watching her in testimony at this uh, city council and uh, and from there, uh, then uh, other things that she's been involved with. So welcome to the show today, Chun, and thank you for being here. Aloha. Nice to be here. So, uh, you know, I've seen your uh, passionate advocacy for a variety of issues uh, at the city council, and uh, I've admired your ability to be very um, uh, direct and, and, and frank on issues that are passionate to you. And uh, that's a, a gift that you have, but, but you do it in, in a way that, that makes people listen. And so what has made you decide to run for mayor? Well, that's a good question. You know, we have been on the outside of, uh, of City Hall for decades. And for decades, we have been talking about some things that are really important. And, and COVID-19 has, in a way, kind of validated a lot of what we have been complaining, groaning about. Uh, and, and one of it was, you know, certainly preserving our farmlands and making sure that we have food security and you know issues like keeping open spaces and making sure that public lands belong in public hands keep the country country and all those all those um, very important issues to us and i'm sure to many of our people here as well and and the fact that we really need to have a good fiscal management at city hall in my opinion, cities fall and cities rise with its fiscal management. I mean, come on, we want things, we love things, but we need money to make that happen. And so if we don't, if we're not careful with how we spend the very uh, limited resources we have, then, then we're not really doing the job that the taxpayers would expect us to do. And so that's a, that's one of the reasons why I'm running. I've actually grown older <laughs> and I've grown more impatient. <laughs> <laughs> and many of us have come to the realization that, hey, you know, if we really want change, we need to be on the inside. You know, we need to be on in, inside. If things happen better when you're in, in the inside, I think you have been through so many of that where we can all protest, we can all petition, we can all testify they were blue in the face, right? And guess what? At the very end of the very robust process, guess what? That decision does not reflect the general sentiment of the people. And so we say, man, we need to get in there. We need to get in there because the office of the mayor is a very powerful office. You get to, you get to uh, put commissioners, you get to put people in the boards. And to me, those commissions and those boards are there to promote more public participation. So you get people from all walks of life. You know, we don't choose the same old, same old people that sometimes occupy two or three positions simultaneously, right? Uh, to me, Commissions and boards are never meant to be an extension of the government. It's meant to provide a higher level of participation, uh, uh, more independent thought and deliberation to the decision-making process. So that's, that's just some of the reasons why I'm running. And, you know, on so many fronts, so many of our young people are working two to three jobs just to put food on the table. And so many of our older folks have to delay their retirement just to survive. And we see the homeless there and we see park projects here and we see so many of the issues, so many on the management 
that seriously, I think that we, we the residents can definitely do a better job. <laughs> do a better job. Okay. And so, you, and that, that's what it's all about. Now, just for folks at, uh, at home, uh, if they want to follow along and some of the uh, issues that you're uh, have have some uh, passion about, uh, although there's a lot of them and obviously you can't uh, cover all of them on your website. It's right. votechune.com, which is V as in Victor, O, T as in Tom, E, Chun, C, H, O, O, N as in Nancy, dot com. Uh, and you'll be able to find out more information and how to contact um, your campaign if people wanted to get involved or maybe even ask you some questions. Uh, now, uh, is it, would this be the first elective office that you, that you would hold? No, I, um, I actually, um, two years ago, on the very last day, because there were, there were two candidates for the city council um, that I felt were really going to be detri detrimental, at least to the issues of our area. So I felt like I needed to go in there and make sure that our voices and our issues were heard. So I, so I, filed, <laughs> I filed on the last day and I campaigned for two months. And you know, I'm, I'm glad I did because um, the issue of keep the country country was on the table and all candidates affirmed that they will keep the country country. So maybe you, you were able to move the needle even if you weren't elected to that office. Right. At the time. I, yeah, I, I knew I was taking a risk because some candidates have been preparing for eight years, right? Sure. I mean, some, some, some people are really ambitious about that. And the fact that also with the en Envision Lai project, all the candidates agreed and they would take on video that they will not change the boundary growth line in Malai Kahana. Uh, that an ag agricultural land that they will not, um, they will not encroach into the agricultural land. So, so I feel like those were valuable um, results that I got from that campaign. I'm very happy about it because mm -hmm. now, now we're still going through our Ko'olau Loa sustainable plan that has been going through the process, guess, for 10 years. <laughs> way, the timeliness is way up and it's gonna come up again. And all we have to do is to tell the city member like, hey, this is what you said you were gonna do and we are depending on you following up on what you said you were going to do. So I'm very happy, I'm very happy. Uh, having run for that and and running for mayor certainly it is a um, a new uh, I I never wanted to and I thought well maybe if I had really been organized boy I would have started campaigning three four years ago right start cult cultivating people and start uh, collecting you know donations but it it came down to that. I do not believe that any democratic campaign should be bought by big money. So I made a very clear, uh, clear uh, line to say that I will not accept uh, donations from PEC and lobbyists. And certainly that makes us the underdog, right? And well, that's a but that's a really important. Uh, and valid point is that you, you're not accepting money from from PACs or corporations. Um, how about unions? Or have you been endorsed by any unions at all? No, I have not. You know, I have not seek uh, any of those endorsements. Um, personally, I felt like, hey, I I am going to be a mayor for everyone. I'm yeah. going to be a mayor for everyone, and and unions to me are important. Uh, because if you are a worker, it is easier to have a group of people for collective bargaining to improve your workplace rather than just a one lonely self, right? So unions are important, but my, my take is that whether our resident is unionized or not, the military or civilian, rich or poor, Democrat or, or Republican, we are all in this together. And that the, the office of the mayor is a non-partisan office. And so, and so I, to me, you know, everyone is going to be a friend. Everyone is going to be a constituent. 
the office of the mayor is a public office, we should be open and transparent to everyone. <laughs> it's a great philosophy and uh, yeah, and admirable. And uh, you know, I I, uh, I hope other candidates and and folks running for all types of elective office uh, would share that that view. And uh, you know, seeking public office, it's um. It's an interesting thing, isn't it? Because uh, you're you're supposed you got to weigh so many different options and ideas and everything. What are people coming up to you now that they know that you're running for mayor? And what is it that they're that's right on the top of their minds that oh, if you become the mayor, I want you to do blank. Right, right. Well, some more interesting thing is someone saying that if I uh, if I help you, can you give me a job? <laughs> <laughs> Now, so, so I'm politely saying, hey, you know, we're all in this. The reason why I'm running is because we want to make sure that the government is functioning well and that it is putting the residents first. We, you know, I'm not into groupie or, or that type of thing. I say, hey, you know, if, if you're looking for a job, fine, but you have got to believe in our cause, right? I am looking for people who are believing in our cause, not what can you do for me, right? That John F. Kennedy question, right? Ask, ask what you know you can do for the country, right? So uh, yes, yeah, right. So I, I guess an answer to that could be yes, I will give you a job, but what I'm going to do is set a proper framework so that everybody will get a job and a good job. Right, 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 and and and. I also found very interesting that some people are very one issue oriented mm -hmm. and, and that's okay. Um, some, some are saying, well, what do you think of climate change? I say, oh, certainly we, we, we need to take care of that. And to me, it doesn't matter what you think of climate change, you know, whether you think it's, a, it's, it's not real or it's real. Um, but the idea is that we all, I think we all can come to a conclusion that our nature, our earth is always changing. I mean, it's a living thing, right? It's all changing. And how are we going to adapt to that? And how are we going to prepare for it? Even, even in the business framework, that is what we call SWOT, you know, S-W-O-T. Yep. So you have your strength and your weaknesses and you, and you can look at it in that mind frame that, yeah, you know, you go to Mapuna Puna and gosh, the roads, <laughs> some portion of the area is, is flooded, even when it's not raining, right? Yeah. So how are we going to address those type of issues? And that is the reason why um, I'm also saying that, hey, we got to look at the real uh, route from Middle Street to Ala Moana. Talk about that for a little bit, because I think that is one of those issues for people that you said, uh, they may be single issue right. people. Um, wh right. What do you think about the rail? Well, I, I'm from Singapore. I, I think that rail is a wonderful thing, in, um, that rapid transit can be equalizer for people for transportation. But in this, this one, this one it is so messed up. <laughs> it is so messed up. We cannot have a project that started in 2006 at 2.7 billion, and today is 2020, and it's at 9.3 billion, and we still don't know what the end um, figure is going to be. Right. And and the interesting thing is that the final route, because it's not going to UH. It should have gone to UH, right? Because that's, that's a lot of the traffic uh, from the students. The final route from Middle Street to Ala Moana is going to be in the sea, Honolulu sea level rise in the nation zone. Well, that's, I think that's a red flag that we should be looking at <laughs> instead of just pouring money into it. And um, so somebody said, whoa, we can't stop there because we can stop at Ala Moana. Well, the thing is, even if we stop at Ala Moana, we're still going to branch out to UH. So what's the difference between stopping at Middle Street and branching out to UH than stopping at uh, Ala Moana? 
Um, what I find interesting is that there, there are several candidates who are saying that, oh, you know, climate change is the crisis of our generation. Good, you know, we need to have that type of a mind frame. But on one hand, you're saying that climate change is the crisis of our generation. On the other hand, you are saying that, well, we've got to just finish real to Ala Moana. It's, it's illogical, it's not, it, you know, it just, we just cannot do public policy in that type of the environment. We it's like the, the left hand isn't uh, knowing what the right, right hand is doing. Right, right. And, and certainly, you know, I have been observing the real for a very long time. Like I say, I'm not against mass uh, rapid transit. I, you know, it is a good thing, but it's my opinion now that the real rapid transit is now controlled by an oligarchy that just wants to finish it because there is profit, because they, they want to continue to make sure that the income is coming in. And I think it is, it is unethical I think that to say, to tell us first that it was for traffic decongestion, and then for us to find out that it was only going to relieve 2% of it, right? And then to tell us it was going to be for um, jobs, 10,000 jobs. And guess what? Only about 1,400 people got the jobs because we were not finally told, oh, our local people don't have the expertise, our local people don't have the experience. So we got to hire people from foreign countries and we got to hire people from the mainland. And you have truck loads of workforce people coming in, doing the job that were promised to our local folks. Right? Well, and that, I suppose that, that gets to a, another issue of yours, which is about transparency in government um, perhaps, you know, an independent ethics commission some, and, and ramped up civic participation. You want to talk about those things, some transparency, um, ethics commission, and, um, and civic participation? Right, right. Um, to me, to me, a government has got to be open and the government ought to be transparent. In fact, I'm saying that one of the first thing I would do is I would set up a whistleblowing hotline so that anybody who feel that there might be some major discrepancy or they have major concerns that they are able to, to share those misgiving in a confidential way so that they're not afraid that they're going to be retaliated or in any form. Uh, that is part of being an open and transparent uh, government. We need to do that. We cannot have a repeat of what was happening with our uh, former Chief K. Aloha and Catherine K. Aloha. You know, that, that episode happened and took place along a long path. So it's not like it happened one day. It's been going on for a long time and there were people along the path who knew, but somehow they felt that they could not share or they could not report. And, you know, we know that's gonna cost us a lot of money still, you know, and, and that mistrust in government and, and I will also make sure that at the end of each week, I want to post on the mayor's website, the list of all the people who have come to visit the office of the mayor. And, and so you know who are the developers that come, who are the lobbyists that come, who are the friends that come, whoever comes. I think the public deserve the right to know the coming and the goings and who, who are coming to visit us and also to have dialogue and I would expect every department head and every deputy head to do that. It's, it's not very hard to do. You just you just paste it, paste it on your website at the end of the month, right? And that's that, a that's a, a wonderful idea that sh should be implemented immediately just so we can see and right. what's to hide. It's the government. The government is right. here. We are the government. It's here right. to serve us. Um, which I think gets lost a lot of the times. So the government doesn't always feel like it's serving the people. Right, right. And people feel like they're cut out. To me, it is a public office. It's, it's the people's office. You know, they should be able to, to ask any question. I'm certainly not going to hide behind press releases. 
some, you know, I, I'm, uh, it's been interesting to watch, but, but certainly, you know, if it's good news, we'll tell you the good news. If it's bad news, we'll tell you the bad news. You know, we're all in this together. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, just those those simple thoughts um, speak volumes about uh, you know the the idea of um, of an ethical approach to government that's transparent as possible. And I, I know there's other ideas that you have that that would increase um, accountability and and transparency in government. And a lot of these are really simple steps that we could take. They're not costly or difficult, and in fact, probably end up saving. A lot of time and money in the long run or even the short run right so it's back to the basics you know it really expects to the basic and i have testified before you know that any one of us we humans we will make mistakes you know those are errors and omission and certainly the employer should protect us but if any employee is intentionally and willfully violating the city charter, the, the uh, Hawaii state law and the constitution, we the taxpayers shouldn't have to be forced to pay for the intentional and the willful wrongdoing. I, you know, I want to make that very clear that, hey, you know, if we goof up once in a while, we understand, but if you are intentionally violating and intentionally doing wrong, then don't expect us to bail you out because we should, we the taxpayers should not have to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like we've seen some, some pretty uh, <laughs> staggering cases of corruption lately. And, uh, right. Right. And, and, and sadly, I think you know, most government workers, most folks seeking elective office are very noble and high-minded and really do work to serve the public. And it's a, it's a case where a, a few rotten apples end up spoiling the bunch or, or and changing public perception. And especially in, in this day and age when we don't have, when our, our faith in, in maybe some political process or politicians has been tested. Um, who, is a, who, is a, who is a leader that you admire, that, that you respect? It could be someone who's alive or not alive, but is there any, if, any people that come to mind that, that you think, oh, I, I respect and admire that person, that, that, that somebody that maybe that you've, um, looked up to in the past or maybe have to keep a quote in your head from that person? Yeah, I think that um, I, I admire anyone who gets into public service and try to go, uh, do good. And I also resent those who get into public office and try to, to loot the office. <laughs> but I, I would just off the top of my head think of uh, Lee Kuan Yew from Singapore. Mm -hmm. he, he would, he would, he is generally revered throughout the whole world um, as, as the founder of Singapore, someone who had brought Singapore from a third world country into a, a major country where efficiency is, is premier and where the people uh, welfare is really at the top of his, uh, of his list. And now first I have to say that I don't agree with everything he does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, because we have our U.S. Constitution, and I certainly firmly believe that that is a way, the best document in the entire world, in the entire human history. But he has been able to very, very clearly say, hey, we are here to serve the people. And so when he campaigned, they all wear white, just as a symbol of purity and transparency. And in Singapore, you know, what I really like is that, is that everyone, uh, everyone is expected to do good. If you are in a public service, you're expected to do good. In fact, uh, you know, he has, seen that he has since died. But one of the funny things that he said was that he wanted, and it didn't come about, but he wanted to investigate any public elected of official who may seem to have all of a sudden became rich. <laughs> he, he was so against corruption and he was trained in Cambridge, uh, England. Yep. He was saying that, okay, if, if I see you, any of the members of your parliament, all of a sudden I see that you're, you're really rich and it seems like you, 
you're making more money than you should as a member of the parliament. I'm going to investigate you. <laughs> and it's true. I think Singapore is ranked right at the top of Transparency International's um, index. It's, it's just at the very top as far as uh, openness and accountability and transparency from a, a, at least a corporate perspective. So um, yeah, and anyone who's been to Singapore can marvel at how it, like you said, it has yeah. gone, went from the third world to the first world. And and the food is great everywhere too. Uh, so that's <laughs> one thing you, you got to miss. How long have you been in Hawaii anyway? Oh, I've been here uh, since I was 17 years old. So it's almost, gosh, almost 45, uh, you know, 45 years old. And, and you know, in, in Singapore, and we can have the same culture we can expect that our public restaurants will be clean and that there'll be soap in there and that, and that uh, our, our yard will be clean, our parks will be clean. And it's a matter of expectation and it's a matter of culture. And I think that we can do that. We can do that. And I certainly want to bring that and certainly it's a very green, you would love it. It's a green garden city, right? Mm -hmm. Things yeah. grow and, and they specifically make sure that the greenery is important. You know, like I say, I don't agree with every of his tactics, you know, his yeah. methods. Yeah. But the, the idea and the ideal of an efficient, effective government where things are run well, where there's no corruption, that is certainly something that we can do here easily. With, uh, with a great amount of civic pride as well. Because right, we, right. We see that that's so, uh, like you said, it's, yes, we can expect excellence from our from our public servants. And then, then it, it goes to every member of the society. Right, um, right, right. You know, yeah, and, it, and it becomes a culture. But let me share it with you a really funny story. I was in Singapore for a month and we went all over the roads, in the small roads, the outer roads, every kind of road there was not a single pothole, not a single pothole. And on our way home, cruising back into Honolulu airport, we had to burst into laughter when the, when the pilot through the intercom said, we apologize, there will be a two minutes delay because there's a pothole in front of the, of the plane and we have to be pulled into the terminal. <laughs> And there it is. I mean, we've we've got a lot of work in front of us, uh, and 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 those are those are terrific examples. We have a lot of work in front of us. We have a lot of opportunities in front of us. But with people like you running for office, with um, with the values that you hold and the ideas that you have, I think are um, really terrific. Uh, if if we can keep that spirit up and and share that with other people, uh, regardless of who gets into office. But of course. Uh, you are hoping to be elected by mayor, uh, to mayor, so people are going to be able to vote tune and uh, if they want to from next week, I believe the twenty uh, something, and they'll get a ballot in the mail. So for more information, go to votetune.com. And unfortunately, we are out of time today, tune, but <laughs> it has been my great uh, pleasure to have you on the show and to, for you to share some ideas with us. So thank you for being Aloha. here. Aloha, aloha, aloha.